So hi everybody, I am Dr. Shayla Toons Withers. I'm a family physician and I'm here at Essence of Health Wellness Clinic. Thank you for joining me today. Now, if you have watched the news recently, especially this week, you have probably seen some data regarding how it seems that the coronavirus is disproportionately affecting African Americans here in the United States. There are a number of factors that may be contributing to this data. So today we'll discuss these factors. But let's start by looking at our current case counts of coronavirus for this week. This data is up to date as of April the 9th um, in that most of the jurisdictions as well as the CDC uh, publishes their data um, in the afternoon before each day. So if we look at the current cases as a whole here in the United States, um, there are a total of 427,460 positive cases. Last week, just for reference, there were 213,144 cases. So once again, we have seen our total number of cases double over the course of a week. In terms of deaths, uh, in the United States. This week, there were 14,696 deaths. Last week, there were 4,513 deaths. So if you look at the number of deaths, this is very important because now we have seen the rate of deaths triple um, over the course of a week. Now the states still that are suffering the most in terms of the highest numbers of cases, New York, we know our, our friends in New York are, are still suffering quite a bit from this virus. Um, they've had 149,316 cases um, of coronavirus. New Jersey, uh, 47,437 cases. Michigan, 20,346 cases. Louisiana, 17,000 cases. And in California, 16,000 cases. So those are our top five states right now in terms of the number um, of the number of highest cases of uh, coronavirus positive patients. Now, if we go to Tennessee, which is where I'm located here with Essence of Health. So in Tennessee, uh, we have had a total number of 4,600 34 cases. And if you look at the data for Tennessee from last week, there were 2,845 positive cases. So the, the nice thing that we're seeing with this current data out of Tennessee is that here in Tennessee, we have um, possibly have slowed, slowed our, our rate of cases down a little bit. We haven't um, doubled because if we looked at the week prior when we looked at this data, we had uh, more than doubled our total positive cases over the course of a week. And so we haven't seen this, this doubling um, as of this week. So there may be some, some promise there. However, in terms of fatalities, we have had 94 total deaths here in the state of Tennessee. And if we look at the breakdown in terms of the age groups of positive cases here in Tennessee, we continue to see that it's the age group of 21 to 30 year olds who have the most positive cases. So uh, that age group um, has, has a total number of 991 positive cases right now, coronavirus. The age group, uh, the second highest is age group 51 to 60 year olds with 845 positive cases. And then um, the third group is our 31 to 40 year olds with 747 positive cases. But so when we look at this data, we also look at from a standpoint of, so yeah, these age groups are the, the folks who are most likely to get the coronavirus. However, these folks are not the most likely to die from coronavirus. So when we look at the death rates, um, the, the highest number of deaths that we've seen here in Tennessee has been in age group 81 and up with 30 deaths. Then in age group 71 to 80 year olds, they've had 24 deaths. And in the 61 to 70 year old age group, there have been 23 deaths in that group. So what this, what this data will tell us then is that, yeah, these younger age groups, the, the 21 to 
to 60 year olds are the ones who have the most number of cases, but they are not the ones who are most likely to die from this virus. But that also brings home the importance of keeping everyone inside so that the young, healthy 20, 20 to 30, 20 to 40 year olds are not out infecting our elderly population and giving them a virus that's potentially deadly to them. Then when we look at in, in Tennessee here in terms of our counties that are being most uh, affected from coronavirus currently, Shelby County has come in with 1,006 total positive cases and they've had 20 deaths. Davidson County has had 1,004 positive cases and they've had 13 deaths. And Sumner County has had 389 positive cases with 20 deaths. For comparison, here in Hamilton County, we've had 98 total positive cases with 10 deaths from coronavirus. And so that's our, our, our national and our st state data by, by age and, and by positive cases. And so what came to light this week is that we had not seen a lot of data from the CDC regarding the racial um, and ethnicity breakdown of these cases. And why is that important? Well, it's, it's one thing that the, the CDC reports on for a number of, of diseases. They tend to break, break data down based upon a number of things. And so, and it's good to look at data from that way because it gives you a lot of different perspectives and how you may be able to help improve a specific disease or help help to prevent a specific disease or help a certain population. So that's why it's important to look at these different things. And so um, usually what the CDC will break down for diseases, they'll look at things like age, they'll look at um, they'll look at sex, males versus females, they'll look at ethnicity, um, racial groups. And so and, and this is not just for coronavirus, but they look at this for a number of things. Um, so let me share with you the data that was released in the media regarding the racial and ethnic breakdown for coronavirus. So when the CDC did uh, reveal the racial disparities, a couple of things to keep in mind. So the data was pulled from a small sample size. So it was 14 states that they looked at during the month of March. Um, and then ra race and ethnicity data was available for 580 patients who were hospitalized for coronavirus. So this, if you look at you know the numbers I just recorded in terms of the national um, numbers that we've had over 400,000 total cases here um, in the United States. So they only looked at 580 um, of those hospitalized patients. So it is a small number, but it does give us data because this is the first data that we've had to come out um, in terms of giving us this racial breakdown um, for coronavirus. And now according to the CDC, uh, so when they looked at the, the population breakdown, there were 59% white, 14% Latino, 18% black, and 45% um, so when you looked at the population, I'm, excuse me, so the population uh, for the CDC of the breakdown of people here in our country was 59% white, 14% Latino, 18% black. But when you looked at um, the hospitalized patients, 45% of those hospitalized coronavirus patients were white, 8% were Latino, and 33% of those hospitalized patients were black. So that's where the disproportionality of it comes from. So while uh, blacks may make up 18% of the population, well, 33% of the hospitalized coronavirus patients were black. Um, and so when there was another report in the Washington Post where they further looked at the breakdown of this data. And so, and what they found to further show you more of the disproportionality side of this is that African Americans um, made up 27% of the population in Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, but 70% of its COVID-19 deaths um, were African Americans. In Chicago, they found that 30% of the population um, is African American, but 69% of the deaths, um, the hospitalized deaths from coronavirus were African American. Then in Louisiana, the disparity was that 
uh, it's 32% made up of African Americans, but 70% of the deaths were African Americans. And also in Michigan, they looked at the data where African Americans make up 14% of the population, but accounted for 40% of the deaths from coronavirus. And so, as you can see there, the, the there is a disparity. And so, you know, one we have to ask why. Well, you know, the one thing we do know is that coronavirus can affect any person of any color, um, any any socioeconomic background, uh, any race, any, um, you know, any economic status, any of those things, coronavirus can definitely um, affect you. You can definitely catch this virus. So what we, you know, we know is that it's not just having brown skin color um, is what's causing you to get coronavirus. So let's talk about what health disparities are. So health disparities are defined as, as gaps in health or uh, health determinants between segments of the population. And so factors that can contribute to these disparities often include where you live or because of where you live gives you uh, less access to have health care or health care services um, in some places where you live can determine if you have clean air, can determine if you have clean water, um, can determine the type of groceries that you're able to buy that are available to you. Um, so where you live is one of those factors. Um, where you may have been born. So, um, and this is beyond the United States, but um, in certain places in certain countries, as we know, being born in that country predisposes you to have certain health conditions and certain, and to um, be more susceptible to death from certain conditions. And then where you work. So if we look at um, where a lot of African-Americans may work in the United States, it may be um, jobs where they may be more exposed to coronavirus. So they may be exposed to a higher level of the virus. And those can be jobs, you know, not necessarily jobs that have been deemed um, essential, you know, like we see in we see with our uh, people who are working in hospitals or healthcare centers, um, but even those people who are cashiers, those people who may work minimum wage jobs um, at restaurants or you know fast food areas, and so that may also be predisposing them to uh, getting more virulent strains of this virus and, and predisposing them uh, more so to this virus. And then other things we know about health disparities where there are, you know, several health disparities in the United States um, when it comes to African Americans. And those health disparities include diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, rates of obesity and HIV and AIDS. Um, and as we know, diabetes and high blood pressure can both contribute to chronic kidney disease. And so when you look at those conditions um, that make folks more susceptible of death from coronavirus, the list is the same. It's those same conditions that um, African-Americans tend to uh, have a higher rate of these conditions. So, you know, looking at that, gives you an idea as to why African Americans may be uh, dying more from this virus versus other subsets of populations here in the United States. And so I, I bring that home to say that really, you know, prevention is the key here uh, for us as a population and is one of the, the things that we can begin to tackle so that we can um, help to further eliminate this disparity. So one, when I say prevention, is to, you know, take measures to reduce infection uh, with coronavirus. So those are those things we've been talking about for several weeks now, staying home. So um, a lot of our communities of color, African-American communities, we like to, to congregate with family and we like to be in community. But right now it's important to stay home. You know, as we looked at that data um, earlier today um, showing where the younger populations are, are more so carriers of this virus and, and testing positive for this virus, yet our older populations are dying from this virus. Um, so stay home, don't, don't commune in these um, gatherings of people. Remember to wash your hands. Everybody should always be mindful to wash your hands. Um, I do know in some areas now they are setting up hand washing stations. Um, so even those those people who may be homeless um, or those people who may still have to walk to work or um, be on the street for some reason, they're still able to clean their hands. And it's because we know hand washing, um, as we recall, those 20 seconds of hand washing or having that alcohol-based hand sanitizer is important for helping to prevent this disease. 
And the other other thing is to cover your face and your your mouth, your eyes um, when you're going out. So for those of us who have to go to the grocery store still, uh, you know, because you still have to eat, you still have to get cleaning items and those things. But make sure you're covering your face when you're out. Use a mask, use a bandana. Um, Covering your eyes is important, too. Um, If you have glasses, you can wear those to keep your eyes covered um, so that you just lessen your chance of catching this virus. The second part of prevention being key is prevention of chronic disease. So much of what I do here at Essence of Health is talk to my patients about how to prevent chronic disease and how we treat chronic disease with lifestyle changes. So one of those big things is to don't smoke because we know smoking increases our rate of asthma. Smoking makes it harder for us to breathe. Um, And in a condition like coronavirus, that's a respiratory illness. It will definitely increase your risk of death. So don't smoke. The other thing is to eat a heart healthy plant based diet. Um, a plant based diet has been shown to reduce your risk of heart disease, has been shown to reduce your risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, um, reduce risk of obesity. So, so you know, be mindful of what you're eating. Uh, eat more fruits and vegetables. Decrease your intake of those meat in those dairy products um, that can be harmful um, to you and make you more susceptible to catching these chronic diseases. The other part to that is to get exercise, get up and move. Yeah, we should be staying home, but there are a number of ways to get up and move. If you refer back to some of the other videos that I've done um, over the weeks, we've talked about ways to get up and move um, when you're indoors. There are lots of resources there. So don't sit sedentary, but get up and move around. And so prevention can you know, really be good in terms of helping uh, to lower our rates of, of not only catching coronavirus, but lower our rates of death from coronavirus. And the other one, which is, is I'm putting it last, but it's certainly not the least of importance is because it's very important, is if you are ill to seek help immediately. So one of those risk factors that tend to play into health disparities um, is the lack of access to health care. And so what we'll find is that sometimes when people who don't have health insurance or people who feel like they can't afford to see their doctor, they will sit home um, and try to, to deal with illness on their own and, and by themselves without having any support um, or having a doctor who they can call and get advice, medical advice from. Um, but with a virus like this, seek help immediately if you're feeling ill. Don't be afraid to, to, um, to go see a doctor, to go to your local emergency room um, if you're feeling short of breath so that you can get that access to health care early on um, and so that you lessen your risk of death from this virus. And so that's what I have for you all today. And always remember the essence of health is in you. And I thank you so much for joining me. And I will see now if there are any questions here. And there are some questions. Ah, okay. So from Hannah Montana, I wonder if the higher number of younger age groups is because the messaging didn't initially target this group. That's certainly a good thought um, because as we saw like in Florida where there are um, the folks on spring break who still um, partook in that activity. Um, and so that's certainly possible. And then, you know, uh, as we initially heard that we thought it was the older populations who were more susceptible to getting this virus. So that that's certainly possible that that's why the numbers are higher in the younger age groups. But as we're seeing, even though the younger age groups are getting infected, they are not at the increased risk of death um, from this virus. And... Hannah Montana also states, recall in the media when folks were touting that African-Americans could not get coronavirus. People believed it and kept on going to church and funerals. That is actually a good point, um, which can be true. We did see um, in a number of places that religious organizations and churches continued to hold services um, initially until there were more state-to-state mandates regarding the gathering of of large um, large amounts of, of people um, in one place. And so we do know there's a long history in terms of African-Americans um, and going to church and gathering uh, for religious meetings. And so that could that could certainly uh, be a contributing factor to why we're seeing this uh, this disproportionate rate of African-Americans dying from coronavirus. 
Are there any other questions? But I do thank you uh, for joining me today. So if anyone else has questions or thoughts or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section of this video. I do wanna uh, reiterate that Essence of Health is still accepting new patients. Um, even with coronavirus, all of my patients have access um, to healthcare via um, video, video appointments, video meetings, um, as well as text messaging access. And my patients get access to uh, have questions and uh, via email also. So, and that comes with their, their membership package. So that thing we talked about in terms of lack of access does not happen here at, es at Essence of Health Wellness Clinic. Uh, and during the coronavirus, just to make things more affordable for people, I continue to waive the $75 enrollment fee. So that is a savings as of right now. So if you are interested, take a look at the website, www.essenceofhealthwellnessclinic.com, or you can um, leave a message here on Facebook. There is a way to reach out uh, also there, or you can feel free to call the office at 423-225-2245. I do have one other question uh, from Khadija Days. Can you discuss the types of mask and the benefits of each? Certainly. So there are different types of mask and uh, I wish I had to grab some in preparation for this. Uh, if you give me one second, I can actually grab some and I can show them to you. One moment. Okay, so this is an N95 mask, the correct way here. And if you look on the front of it, um, it says N95. And so that lets you know that it's a true N95 mask. Um, and this is the other side to this mask. And so the way that the N95 works and the, what the number means is that it will block out 95% of particulate matter um, from you breathing in. And so when we look at those particulates, those are things that are in the air, including the coronavirus. So the N95 will block out 95% of those things. And then the other part to that is when you look at the data on the particle size um, for coronavirus, the N95 mask has been shown to be sufficient for blocking out even the small particulate size of the coronavirus. Um, from you inhaling it in with that type of mask. This next mask is called a procedure mask or a surgical mask. And this is the kind that you just put behind your, your ears. Um, that's the outside, that's the inside of it. And those masks are not in 95 masks. They do not block out 95%. However, they have been found to block out, um, and it says it here, that they actually can block out about 85%, 85 to 95, um, according to this box. Um, definitely meeting the requirements of a good barrier there. And so these were the type of masks that people were initially using when they were told to use a surgical mask. But if you look at the way that they fit, even though they can block out more matter, they don't, they have a looser fit. I can pull that back out. They have a looser fit because they only go behind the ear loops um, than the N95 does. So it's not going to be as effective as the N95 because the N95 actually fits completely over your face and it doesn't allow for um, any particulates to come in from the sides or from the top um, of the mask. And healthcare workers uh, in the hospitals, they usually will do something called a fit test. And what a fit test is, uh, is where 
you kind of get into this box and you put your N95 on one and they actually spray this kind of sweet liquid. And if you can taste it or smell it, then that's telling you that your, your mask is not fitted properly um, because that mask is supposed to protect out the majority of things. And so they actually do that to determine what's going to be best um, in terms of fit to to block out those particulates because we we've, we've long used in 95 masks for things like tuberculosis um so even before coronavirus came on the scene uh and then the other masks that have you've probably seen out in the media are just the claw face masks uh a lot of them have been structured based upon the the surgical mask that i just showed you um and so with the the cloth face mask, um, I've seen people do them with ear loops. I've seen people do them with the kind you can tie in the back behind your hair. Um, those masks are good. They're definitely better than nothing. And if you look at the the particulates in terms of what they can block out, certain of the materials that have been used can block out about fifty percent of of particulates um, in terms of that. So it it will certainly give you more protection than not wearing nothing at all. And then the other um, benefit with some of the cloth mask is that um, I've seen where people can put a slit into the bottom of them and you can insert a filter. And the types of filters that are being used are the things that we usually use uh, in our homes like air filters. Um, because when you look at when we use filters in our homes, that's exactly what we're using them for. Because as our air condition brings that air from outside, we're trying to filter certain things from not um, circulating into our, our home environment. And so it can work the same way with your 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 self-structured um, mask that you designed on your own. So those are the different masks. Thanks for asking. Any other questions right now? Okay. Well, I am going to wrap up for today. And like I said, if anyone else has any more questions, thoughts, or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Thank you for joining me and um, you all have a good weekend. Take care.